Hey everyone, Sir Terlin here again, and today we're bringing you another timeline stack. And this time it's gonna be Trondo Orn timeline. Now, last week we showcased Jackson, Jackson V, and today we're showcasing Trondo Orn. And two, both of those decks together really are the reason why timelines has been such a controversial car in the Legends of Runeterra history. This is really the OG version, and the power of this version comes from the combination of having the Trondo Pillar with the concurrent timelines. It means that when you have timelines and you play that pillar, you'll get an A drop for free and be able to still refill your whole mana, which is absolutely ridiculous. Combine that with tools like Berry and Ice into Edda Stairs, as well as all the weapon masters that we all know, love, and hate, and you get this ridiculous deck that is really, really difficult to, to play to play against. Now, this version is not going all in on timelines. We are playing Orn to give us an alternate win condition. That's why we don't play Revna, but it still relies on timeline to really give you a good win rate percentage. So, hope you enjoy the game's coming up soon. And if you do, make sure to like the below and subscribe to us. We post LOR videos every single day. Enjoy the game. In this match, we're going against Seraphine, Estriel, and Victor. No timelines. Uh, we get a Trollshan, which is kind of cute. Okay, well, uh, at least we have the Clockling, right? So even though, even if we don't get timelines early, the Clockling will allow me to predict into it potentially. Hmm. Let's give it one more turn before we play the Artisan. Because if we draw the timelines, I won't, I won't mind this Artisan becoming something else. I guess honestly the artisan is good enough as a 2-3. That there's not a lot better stat lines than this that you can get. So maybe we don't. Maybe we don't. Maybe we don't actually We don't actually bother with her. We just go like this. Maybe we just go like this for now. Uh we'll pass. I want to make sure that I can block stuff. Let's go clockling. Go clockling. Trying to find that timelines. Okay, you can you can hit that clock lane, that's okay. I'm not gonna play this one. I'm not gonna play this one, right? I guess it, this this is close of no it's always this, right? You put this as zero and also give it vulnerable, so it makes it easier for you to be able to attack with your astral. Doesn't make sense to go for the blood mender. Yeah, we'll pass, we'll go the second clock lane. Alright, but we can just go timelines now. <laughs> no need to play the clock lane. Let's just go combat cook. I was thinking, okay, clock lane, whatever, but uh, now I just go combat cook. And we have the trundles. Yeah, so we go combat cook here. Let's uh, let's definitely pick this overwhelm. Mm. Let's go. Let's go here. Let's go here. It's not as strong as other things but the fact that this has the fact that it's an elusive it's gonna be pretty difficult against the opponent to deal with i don't want to time and dedication her in case that the opponent has a head splitterator okay so you're gonna just stun it wow that's actually perfect right so they get to do the full auto star combo i guess we'll go like this so at least he doesn't die force the opponent to have to have another card to kill this because we can always heal it with the Mender next time if the opponent doesn't open with it right away. So the opponent should just kill this next time, right? That's the first thing they should do. Otherwise, the Mender heals her up. That's so unfortunate. If you have the way to kill this, you want to do it now. If you go like this, I'm going to press OK. You see that I have this in my hand. Yeah, like you know that I have this in my hand. So like, there's absolutely, absolutely no reason that you ever do anything else other than that. Um, hmm. If we mend her now, I don't think it's worth it, right? We could go Artisan. Artisan again. Or we can go Trundle. Let's go Trundle. I know I'm not getting value from the uh, the timelines this turn. But I don't know that I want to play this Clockland and give it vulnerable just yet. So that's why I want to do it this way first. We can go ahead and play it this turn. I 
I like the I like the wild claw. I like the wild claw ferocity. And uh, let's go for the beast below. He's still gonna have minus two and vulnerable, right? So at least this is a big four health unit that the opponent has to watch out for. It's kind of weird putting this on Trondo when this doesn't need to have Overwhelm, but this allows me to put pressure this turn. And then next turn we can go Haplo Mender. Like, opponent shouldn't have a good way of dealing with this Trondo. Right? So this allows me to go for the... And, and this also levels up the Orb, which is a, a benefit that I didn't think about. But this lets me go for the Mender here. Get this Trundle even stronger. And Trundle alone can literally just kill them. Because the opponent's damage is all... Oh, the opponent's removal is all damage based. So because the, the, because the opponent's removal is all damage based, when this Trundle gets bigger and bigger, they're going to have a hard time really dealing into it. Again, do your do your worst. Do your worst. I'm just gonna go like this. Hmm. Let's go Firebrand. I like the spell shield. I like the spell shield that he has. It's another unit that the opponents can have a hard time. I mean, they can technically kill this. If they can level up Victor, they can actually kill this because they have tough. But then the Victor's gonna have no health to be able to deal with the Trundle. They're gonna have the Seraphine leveled up, which is a problem. And if they have stuns, they'll be able to deal with the Trundle. But I'm again, I'm just I'm just chilling here. Alright. So they get to destroy the Overwoman equipment. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I, I gave that to them. I put a lot into that equipment too, right? So they top deck into the signpost, like that like they need it. We'll pass. We'll still have the pillar. We still push the trundle away from anything that the opponent might have. And we can still kill this Victor here. Oh, and this is this is beautiful. Because now none of the units can block this. So now none of the units can block. Right? And we have another big overwhelm. So none of the units can block and we can pull the Victor away. It doesn't matter what you have. Like, I can just pull this Victor away and attack with everything else. I guess the, you get to level up yourself, and that could be a problem. So, maybe it's worth it for us to develop something else. Like, maybe we go for, like, the Clockling, because I want to. I kind of want to have this Elusive on the field. As long as we have access to Fury, that's five. Five mana, we have ten. No, you know what? I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do anything, because if they play... If they have a way to remove the Trundle, which is the easiest one that they can remove here, then it helps them out. All right, so this helps them as well. This keeps them alive. Because it lets them give plus two, plus three. Like, it lets them give the power that they need to keep their victor alive. Ah, uh, to keep their, their self alive. So, what if we just sacrifice this Trundle? Why don't we just sacrifice this Trundle into the victor? Well, we opponent can actually save this Victor. If if we attack with Trundle, they can actually save it. I guess if we have the mist, because they can go plus one, plus one. That's gonna be seven. Okay. Well, they used to here, so they cannot save this. All right. So I don't care about your stuff. Like, I can always just leave this here. All I need to do is just kill this Victor, and then play my second Trundle. I kill Victor, I play second Trundle, I have Entomb for a potential Ezreal. Hmm, okay. You keep the Victor alive, we play second Trundle. Do I still care about killing that Victor? The Spell Shield is the only thing that punishes me here. If it's not a Spell Shield, I think I'm fine. Again, all I wanted was the second pillar anyways. 
That's why I didn't care about sacrificing my first strangle. They go for the second heroic refrain. Let's go like this. That gives me the time and dedication. Clears my hand a little bit. The opponent still cannot block. Uh I think we I think we go for it. I think we go for the entomb here on this victor. Mm. You know what? I don't need it. If the opponent gets spell shield, I can mystic shot it away. If the opponent gets spell shield, I can always mystic, mystic shot it away. So I don't think it's necessary. Oh, that's that's kind of unfortunate. None of these are really good for us. So let's just go the biggest unit that we have. Let's go for the biggest unit that we have right here. Do we entomb it or do we just... Do we entomb this or we just kill it? Let's just flash freeze. The accurate situation is that I got I, I, because I used because I did it the way that I did. I'm gonna pass. I'm still kind of concerned about Ezreal being able to kill us, so I don't want to tap out of the second. I don't want to tap out of the entomb. I need to be able to deal with this Ezreal if it comes out. Ah, right. so like we talked about, Ezreal is a problem. So we gotta go like this. Because they can literally kill us from 20 to 0 with Seraphine and Ezreal on the field. So we do this now. Let them do whatever they want. It's not a, it shouldn't be enough to kill us here. Okay, so they're gonna go ahead and kill this guy too. Okay, so yeah, that is enough to kill this. So they do have their blockers again. Two, one, wait. Why did they, they just fill their whole board with like... I don't know that I agree with filling their whole top of their deck with the victor spell. Right? Does that make sense for them to do? We don't have any overwhelms, so we don't have any overwhelms. I, I, I don't think that doesn't matter. I don't think that matters. We don't have any overwhelms. The opponent gets that victor regen. All right, we just go like this. Force him to have the deny. You used the deny earlier already. We got we got baited out by the uh, very nice. So we get baited out by the very nice here. Opponent's top of the deck is going to be, like, completely horrible. And that's the game. Because the opponent, like, ended up putting so many of the victor spells, we got baited out. I absolutely agree we got baited out here by the very nice. I should have played the uh, the second pillar this turn instead of last turn to give to give the victor uh, the vulnerable, by the way. So, GG's. In this match, are we going to against Kindred and Biego, right? The skin threw me off, but I'm guessing that is a Biego. We don't get timelines, so let's mulligan for timelines. Yeah, that is a Biego. We still don't get timelines. Where is my timelines? Oh, this These games are so hard today. Like, compared to my first video with timelines, where I played Jax and, and Bai, this time around, I'm not getting, like, timelines as often as I should, or as often as I wish I will. So it's been pretty, pretty bad. Oh, uh, blacksmith, I guess. Yeah, blacksmith first. We'll play the blacksmith first. Combat reel. Yeah, sure. We'll drop the troll shant. No, they decide not to do anything, okay? I'm guessing they probably have a kindred. They must have a Kendra for them to for them to not do this, right? I'm actually gonna get rid of the equipment. I want to discard the equipment. I want them to kill this so I can discard the equipment with the Sunny Urchin. Okay, so they don't have Kendra either. So, what the heck is going on? I need this draw. Yeah, so we'll go like this. 
Ha! Cast away again. Gotta gotta go here. Now they could actually have the deny, right? They could actually have the deny here for the uh, for the timelines, which is kind of funny, but it's giving them so much value if they actually do it. Like it actually will give them a lot of value if they do it. Uh, this protects me against battle fees, that's why I picked the tough. Shall we do hmm. Let's go Trondo. I want the opponent to tap out of the Bastaya. I want to see if the opponent, if they have a Bastaya, if the opponent actually tries to play something to, to get the Kendra skill. Oh, so it's an ultimate trooper. So I just, I was just, didn't even matter. Sure. Now this Kendra is going to be a problem, right? This Kendra is going to be a problem. You have right negation. They don't have right negation. The Kendra's gonna be a problem, but we got our timelines, right? We lose this castaway. The Kendra can kill my next unit as well. Let's go here. Uh, I guess let's go for the quick attack into the River Shaper. That's not bad. If this guy gets to hit at least once, that's pretty good, right? It gets me potentially very nice or removal against this Kendra. Yeah, so we just go like this. I'll even give you both. They will have to have like a vengeance, right? To really get me scared. I want to get this very nice from this hit. If it's just like a haste bag, we can troll Shen. He still kills the river shaper though. Yeah, so it is a haste bag, right? So we can just troll Shen here, force a mist, uh, force a battle feast. I just need this to hit at least once. Uh, this Kendra level up is not gonna be fun. Okay, they also have the battle feast, so they have both cards, right? They have both cards that they needed, which is face back and battle feast. And then they get spell shield for the Diego or the Hydrovine, so they might very nice. Wouldn't have done anything anyways. That's actually nuts. This is actually nuts. Ugh. Uh, they also reset. Actually, they can just kill this, right? Because they, they, they level up gets reset. Yeah, so they can just kill this right now. Because we opted not to... Uh... Yeah, I'm going to have to play this cast away right now. I'm going to have to play this cast away right now so that I have a blocker for the Kindred. Yeah, they had the a they had the action. I'm I'm surprised they didn't keep that spell shield instead. Like, why not kill the spiderling? Why kill your spell shield instead of a spiderling? Like now you actually are gonna get punished by this very nice. That's really odd, right? That's like really odd. I'm gonna skip and try to look for that it that stairs. Imagine if the opponent actually has spell shield here. On this Diego. What I'm guessing is that they have a way. They, they, this is a. This is the. This is the Benjamin Bastaya. Then, right? This has to be the Benjamin Bastaya if the opponent's just going like this. The problem is that I do have this Ice Pillar, so I can actually tag the Diego. Regardless. Let's go for the older one. So I can tag the Diego regardless of what you're throwing at us here. Casticate? Ooh. But now we just now we just bury, right? So now we can just bury. Was that an I can't even tell if that was an Abenji Bastaya. I didn't see okay, it wasn't a Benji Bastaya. So now we just bury and you lose both champions anyways. So we bury into it the stairs, and you have to have a right negation or a second avenging Bastaya. They could have the second avenging Bastaya. So it has to be exactly right negation. I like the rough colossus. Uh, 
All right. The, oh, the, the other one has the potential of just dying before we actually get value from it. Uh, the, uh, the challenger with... Uh... Okay. Because what we can do here, right, is that we can actually just go ahead and put the equipment on it and just get just get value from it right away. Uh, I guess we go for the Pot of Pain. It's the best equipment. So now we have a rough Colossus that's going to be 10-10. So we always going to consistently have value, right? We open attack because the opponent probably has like a, a, another Casticate. And it doesn't matter that it killed this. Because what we can do is that we can go for the Blood Mender. And uh, sure. And then just have the rough Colossus another turn later. Mm, let's go here. I need another unit though. Before I can play this rough Colossus, I need another unit. Just because we do have these timelines. Right? So because we have these timelines, it does make this kind of awkward here. Like if I play the rough Colossus, it's going to get uh, transformed into something else. So we're kind of like in an aqua position where we don't have any other cards that we can play because we don't have any other units. And apparently, yeah, that's going to be a problem. Okay. So we're both passing here. I can throw away one of these Mystic Shots. That is, a, that is a lot of damage. That, that's a lot of damage that the opponent is starting to do here. Yeah, we can throw... How, how do we not have any units, right? How do we not have any units here? That's so unfortunate. I got the value from the first Rough Colossus because the opponent decided not to vengeance it right away. But it's so unfortunate that we're not getting what we need. Alright, so I'm going to push for Sits here first. If a point wants to take that six, that's cool. I'm gonna play the artisan. It's a great hit. We can play the rough colossus and force the opponent to have to have a, 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 another vengeance. Let's go here. In case that this is an Avenging Bastaya, I want to have access to my very nice. Okay, so it's an all terrain too. All right, all right. We'll go like this. If the opponent has another Casticate, it could be another Vengeance, right? Could be another Vengeance. The opponent gets to do this. I do have the Freeze. So I don't know how much I actually care about that. We'll go like this. Force the opponent to Vengeance this. Like, this has to be the Vengeance, because if not, I get another another Colossus. Uh, I guess I'll get another Colossus for now. And again, just continue using these guys as my clutch. We have Freezes and Barry Knight, and, and not Barry, yeah, three sisters to save myself. You're going to have to deal with these guys next turn. I can block it. I can block, and then we go from there. Like... The, that one turn where they vengeance my Colossus, they have to do it right away before I got value. Because he, he allows me to continuously put, put this Colossus on the field, and that's why I picked this. So, GG. In this match, we're going against Victor and Sword. Alright, so... Can we aggressively rush them down? Mm. I love I love that very nice, but I think I need to do for timelines. We don't get the timelines. Alright, so we don't get the timelines. So we're gonna play more towards the weapon, the the, uh, the weapon masters then. Ah, oh, this is gonna be a turn one soy. Oh, it's not a turn one soy. Look at that. Look at that. I'm gonna pass for now. I don't think I need to play this uh, artisan just yet. If I get a timelines, I wanna have the mana to play timelines into blacksmith. We don't get a timeline, so I guess I'll just drop this blacksmith first, right? Yeah. So I guess we'll go like this for now. Combat wheel or Fisher Whack? It's no combat wheel to begin with. Okay. We Mystic Shot that. Ooh. And then we can go cast away. 
I mean, that was gonna happen no matter what, right? Uh, opponent probably wants to play Victor this turn, so I do like the castaway. And get him. Ooh, there it is. There it is. So we got the timelines. We can still go cast away. Uh, Scryer and the opponent with. All right, I, I would just surrender. If I'm if I'm the opponent, I'm just surrendering right here, right? Like that. That hurts. That hurts me, man. That hurts me to see. This is so much damage here. So this is five nine. I, I put myself at three HP, so the opponent has to actually spam. Like they will have to sacrifice if they want to sacrifice the squire here. I'm okay with this. I'm a okay with this. I would love to. Hmm. What if we go half blood mender? Hey Solari, got a bit of moon rock for you. Hmm. So if we go half blood mender. We can open up. We can literally open up with the ferocity, right? This guy has elusive. That's pretty good. We, create, we, we have elusive combat reel. We can go for the ferocity. And this ferocity is going to have 11 power. They went for the cosmic call. So you have to have something at fast speed that can stop this. I guess they're going to have to have a hush. The hush. So the hush does let them stop the elusive. So they're gonna have to have the hush here to stop this elusive. Otherwise, they lose the game. We'll have Trondo plus the pillar on my next attack. Oh, they actually live at one. Wait, did I? Yeah, they live at one. I miscounted this attack. All right. So they live at one. We have the own level up. We still have Trondo plus Pillar. What is this then? I guess the opponent, if this is that obliterate, it could still be a problem. The opponent has to obliterate both these units because the overwhelm is a little bit too much. But again, that gives me the space to go for the Trondo into the Ice Pillar and then hit the stairs. They're at 1 HP. I mean, we can just stop the kind of the Mystic as well. Equinox, all right, cool. So that's the Equinox from the Star Peak, right? And then the Moon Glow. I mean, props to the opponent. Like, they're actually getting a lot of value here. We topped like, this Orn, by the way. Which is so good now. I'm gonna play this Trundle. If the opponent wants to go ahead and Obliterate away my Trond or my Elusive. I think I'm okay with that. Right? Oh, they're gonna agree that for the Scryer. Wow. They're gonna agree that for the Scryer. We're gonna go Artition here. Hmm. Let's go Elder. I like the Spell Shield a lot. If we get like an Overgrown Equipment. I'll probably copy the Quick Attack, right? on the horn because this guy is like really big we'll take this damage absolutely right we take this damage now we know that the opponent doesn't have the nine mana obliterate and that's okay with us we'll go on we'll go pillar and then we'll go on and that should win us the game with the overwhelms plus whatever we get from the pillar is just gonna completely blow them out now we get the mystic shot as well I guess we can just have another Overwhelm. Nah, let's go for the Brute Father. Let's get another unit. The, the funny thing, by the way, is that we can actually challenge the Elusive away, which means that this Elusive is committing lethal. This is committing lethal. This is not committing lethal, but with the Orn, it's going to be able to commit lethal. The Mystic Shot is committing lethal. Uh, I probably I'm actually thinking about copying the combat reel Because I need that extra mana, right? Conan goes for the stun. Uh, you stun We'll go here now. Let's copy this. Who am I kidding? 
Let's just copy the quick attack. Let's get our own level up. We got both champions leveled up here. We still have enough mana for the Mystic Shot if we get into a sticky situation. And this Orn is going to just make this quick attack weapon just be ridiculous. Uh, yep, that's not going to help you at all. You get your heal. You don't have enough mana to play out whatever card you get here. I guess they do. They can they could technically have they can have another blocker, right? They can only play the things that cost seven. No, they cannot. They cannot. They cannot even play that. Even with this even with the scryer, it's not enough. So you stun both of these, but it doesn't matter. Why didn't they stun the elusive, by the way? Is my question. So why didn't they stun the elusive? Is my question. Yeah, so we resolve this. We can turn on dedication this guy, go like this, pull this guy here, and that's lethal. We get the two mana back for the Mystic Shot just in case. We have the Elusive, plus we have this big 1210 Overwhelm that can, I guess their victor will stay alive. Their victor will be able to defend, but yeah, this this is too much. So, GG's. In this match, we're gonna against Nar and Elise, and this is the new deck from in infinite patterns that i've been seeing doing actually well in some tournaments now because the opponent's playing for their big warden of the tribes if we find the very nice that could be a good way to just stop them on their tracks right we don't have timelines and we don't have very nice though so already this matchup is not good for us how we start so we don't have either one of the two cards that we need. I pull the strings. Yeah. So we don't have any of the two cards that we need. The opponent gets all the spiders here. Very nice timelines. Very nice timelines. Very nice timelines. Okay, we get one, which is probably the most important to be honest. Uh, we should try to see if we can find if we can find the it that stairs, then that very nice is literally gonna win us the game. We can just chill out until their turn 10, until the turn 8 play where they go for their big guy. We'll attack here. I will go, I will, I will use this troll shen. I will use this troll shen now instead of later. Just to play around this wolf being a problem. Because this wolf could technically be, a, be an issue. Alright, we got the combo, right? So we got the combo that we wanted. We can go ahead and block here. Opponent gets another spider. Okay, that's their British steel. That's why I wanted to kill the wolf last turn. Just to kind of play around that. Go fish away. Get the mana back. Uh, this half blood mender. Okay, yeah, cool. Like, you want a battle piece? They do get to level up the leaves here, which is going to be a problem. Go like this. Yeah, that, that at least level up is kind of a problem. It is going to push a lot of damage. If the opponent also plays well... So they could actually just kill my whole board if they so choose to. Let's go Trundle first. That gives me access to this uh, Trundle Ice Quake if I need it. And then we, pa we pass here. We take 5, 9, 10 damage. But we still have this heal from the Half-Blood Mender. The opponent gets to kill both my units. That's cool. Yeah, we will... We'll Ah, atrocity, atrocity, atrocity. So atrocity is a big deal too, right? Opponent does have to play around. Opponent kind of has to play around us having. Uh, they got another release, right? They got another release apparently, right? <laughs> uh, oh. Nar, Nar level up as well. Okay, so this this smells to me like an ice wave. So this smells to me like an Ice Quake, just to get rid of their board. The problem is that if I play Ice Quake... If I play this Ice Quake... I'm tapping out of Barry next turn. Hmm. I can probably survive. I can probably survive their big stuff. Unless they get a bunch of other units. 
This is not great. And we we needed something that gives me health. Like having this here is not what we're looking for. Because this can be easily removed. Hmm. Challenge, challenge. Overwhelm is four. There is another set. Okay, I can block. So the challenge, challenge. Overwhelm, overwhelm. I will tell you of Ord. Do you have your own very nice? A well killing this is actually a big deal. They cannot get greedy, right? So I'm trying to think, like, I need to just pass, right? They cannot get greedy here, so they challenge, challenge. We block the fear some. They still have an extra unit over us, so that would be exactly eight. Plus the overwhelm. Sorry, sorry. This is, this is going to be challenge, challenge. We block the fear some. It's two. Oh, come on. And this is four, which is six, and then seven. Okay, so we live by one here. There's no way, right? Absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous that they did that. Like, that cannot be correct. I don't care. I don't care what you think. That will never be correct. Wow. Wow. So. 8, 12. This is exactly 20. Let's force an answer out of them. So this is going to force potential freeze. I guess I should have played the time of dedication. If we play time of dedication, we win the game right there. Uh, we still win the game, though. Who, who, are, who are we kidding? Who are we kidding? But definitely potentially lose to me the game, right? Like, there was there was no need for me to... Uh, there was no need for me to not play my stuff, right? Like, there was no need for me to not play the Town of Dedication, where we know that we're playing against a Shadow Owls type of deck. Because eating up the Freeze would have been a lot better than eating up what than eating up anything else I did. If they have the second warning of the traps, it's not enough. So, so they messed up by getting greedy, and then I messed up by forgetting that I have Town of Dedication in my hand. So, GG's. In this match, we're going to get Seju, Annie, and Gwen. So, this is going to be an Overwhelm deck. We do have three sisters, which helps us out. A lot against their aggression we don't get timelines we don't get timelines so that's gonna set us behind a bit the torchen is good and letting us get some good trays let's see how this goes here let's see how this goes um hmm so castaway as the blocker is not bad it the stairs is not gonna be bad I, I don't have anything that I can discard here. I really want everything in my hand right now. So I'm going to have to just take this two damage as much as I hate it. I really don't want to discard anything here, right? Ay, ay, ay. What a mess. What a mess. Let's just Mystic Shot that. Let's, uh... Yeah, let's just Mystic that. Let's just Mystic Shot, Mystic Shot that so that we don't take that damage. Not ideal, but I mean, what else can I do, right? It's, it slows down the Sejuani level up as well, so that's not bad. We'll go like this. And just have this blocker. Oh, putting didn't have any other play. Wow, so their hand must be like super expensive. Which is great for us, to be honest. So we'll attack like this. Uh, I want this equipment so I can discard it. I want to kill this overwhelm right now so that the opponent can knock with a bone club on it. So I'm going to go like this because I know I don't have any other play that I can do this turn. If opponent wants to play the troll shen to save this, that's okay. Ah, okay. So this tells me that they do have the bone club, right? So they want to have this overwhelm on the field. So they could have like a big unit that they can put that bone club on. Um, 
I guess we'll take this damage. Yeah, that's that's what I expected, right? We'll take this damage. We'll play the Trundle. We'll play the Trundle for now. We'll take this six damage. I guess we technically could go for a Troll Shen as well here. Let's go like this. We have the regen. We take zero damage. We'll have the regen. This guy is now going to potentially die to like hit that stairs so quick. If I attack. Let's go like this. Let's go like this first. We'll go for the blacksmith. We'll go for the blacksmith to start with. Although the clockling is more, probably more impactful because he could find me the very nice of the freezes, two of which I need for next turn. All right, so we'll go like this first. We'll keep this as a big health blocker into their units. I'm gonna go ahead and drop this clockling. The timelines is not bad. The timelines is not bad, right? He gets the Ice Pillar for next turn to be a really good answer. So now the Ice Pillar on my next attack turn is what I mean. It's going to be pretty good. Now, the opponent could still have access to a Battle Fury here. Hmm. I hope they don't develop anything. Like, we just top deck exactly what we needed. Wait, yeah, like, th this might... I feel bad. I feel bad for the opponent now. Like... We just win. We literally just win because of that very nice. So this is 9 plus 4. That's going to be 13. Plus 2 is going to be 15. Wow. Because even if they... Even if they... Like, if they open, I am forced to block, right? If they open, I'm forced to block. Because I need to play around Atrocity. Yep. Ah, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Wow. Wow. So then we go Ice Pillar into it that stairs. Wow. Wow. Ah. I'm so sorry, opponent. <laughs> hey, look, man. Like, we, we didn't start with timelines, right? So it could have been worse for them. If we had timelines at any time, like, in, earlier in the game, I would have been so much more comfortable. We ended up having to search for the timelines anyways. But this this is just gross. Oh. Oh. Pain is nothing. Oh, no. Oh, no. They're gonna have to block with Sejuani, and we have a second very nice. Yeah, that's game. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, man. Pal. Here, man. I, I lied to you. I lied to you. I, I gotta apologize. <laughs> uh, this is what this is what timelines can do, right? This is why this deck was so powerful before. Ugh. GG's. Hey, welcome back everyone. Hope you enjoyed those games of Trondo or Timelines. Surprisingly, not as many Timelines that games, right? At least not as many that I got early on, which is complete opposite from that video of Jax and, and Vi, where I got like Timelines every single time on turn, on turn two. So, you know, we still managed to win a lot of these games and that's the reason, right? Because this deck still has these Weapon Masters, still has this very nice into it that stairs combo that can still win you the game on the spot even if you don't get timelines. And that's the critical part that makes this deck so powerful. If you're not all in on the timelines, which is one of the weaknesses of a lot of these timeline decks that can just go all in on timelines. Now, compared to the Jets and Bite version, this deck doesn't have any burn. So you're relying more on the combo and the overwhelm and your big eight jobs that you can get from free from the Chondo Pillars. But trust me, that is enough to kind of be able to push all this damage into the opponent. Uh, in terms of Mulligan, it's easy. You're going to have Mulligan for timelines uh, and then be able to also Mulligan. Like, you want to have Mulligan for timelines. If you already have the timelines in your hand, then you want to keep stuff like the Combat Kit, the Castaway, the Blacksmith, so that you can just start with those big Weapon Masters first 
as a way to transform into them. Again, we are playing a lot more into the equipment side of things. That's why we have this apprentice and the Orn. So try to look for the opportunity where you can actually try to level up that Orn by attacking with a power. That is very important, right? Because uh, once you have that Orn leveled up and you're going to have some equipments that are going to be forged by a lot, then you'll be able to just, again, just completely overwhelm the opponent, even if you don't have that timelines on the field, which is important. So timelines first. If you already have timelines, you want to go more for the more for the weapon masters. If you don't get the timelines, then you hope that you get more of the forge package so that you can instead make up some really big units. That's why we also have the ferocity wild the wildcard ferocity. Because if we have a really big equipment, this can become a really big overwhelm that the opponent's gonna have a hard time stopping. Uh so yeah, I mean not a lot else that can be said about this deck. I kind of kind of running out of ideas of ducks to showcase in eternal. That's why I kind of threw this one. Although it's a deck that you all are familiar with. So hope you enjoyed today's games. If you did, make sure to like the video below and subscribe to us. We post LOR videos every single day. You can also find us on Twitch at Twitch system we stream every now and then. And you can also find us on Discord and Twitter. The links to those are both in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all again.